Hello everyone, Matsmus here today. Thank you for joining me on today's video. So, today we are talking about military aviation and specifically transport helicopters and attack helicopters and their future role in the United States military. Now, as you are seeing right now, the beautiful UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter, the workhorse as of right now for the US military, has done very, very well and continues to do very, very well as a transport and support helicopter to all of the United States Armed Forces. I have myself flown in this aircraft, an incredible piece of equipment, and the company that produces these aircraft, Sikorsky, uh, were actually come under my company that I work for right now, so it's actually kind of a sentimental value to me, this aircraft. However, this video is not really about this aircraft in particular, it's more about what's coming in the future, what's going to replace these aircraft. We've got to admit, guys, these aircraft have been for quite some time in service, and the military is starting to look into trying to find ways to replace it. More modern, more futuristic, more adaptable aircraft that can do a lot more, go the extra mile, go the little bit further than the Black Hawk, and even other aircraft can. Now, multiple companies out there have designed and produced multiple different prototypes and variations to try and replace these beautiful helicopters. I must admit, I look at these aircraft and feel very sad to see that eventually they will be replaced because everybody knows the Black Hawk. It's just one of those aircraft that you just relate to the US Armed Forces and Armed Forces around the world and it's just a beautiful helicopter. It really is. It does very, very well. It's performed very well. But really, we do need to start looking at what can replace it, what can work harder than this aircraft. And recently, there has been some interesting developments this year on what will eventually replace this aircraft. So Sikorsky and Boeing have actually offered the first peek at their concept for a new gunship helicopter. The two companies are pitching the Rotocraft, based on the existing SB-1 Defiant transport design, to the US Army as part of the Future Vertical Lift, or the FVL program. On April 10th, 2017, Lockheed Martin, which owns Sikorsky now, posted a sales video online that included a depiction of the attack variant of their FVL Medium FVLM contender. The Army specifically wants the FVLMM to replace the UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter and the AH-64 Apache gunship, which once again is just one of those things that really brings a small tear to my eye because that aircraft has also supported me in Afghanistan and I'm sure many of you who are subscribers of my channel have worked alongside or with both of these helicopters at some point. So it's just a little upsetting to know that they're eventually going to get replaced, but maybe it's just a good thing in the long run. It's not specified whether or not the transport and attack versions need to be based on the same aircraft, but obviously this would be very beneficial, and Sikorsky and Bowen appear to have chosen and developed two separate but highly related designs with common components. The new pitch explains the model will share engines, drivetrain, rear propeller and control surfaces, a fuel tank, various internal avionics and electronics, and more with the SB-1 Assault helicopter. However, the 3D animated teaser, which I'm going to show you in a little while, does not really give any specific details about the new gunship version or show off a real live prototype or mock-up of the gunship version. So it looks like, first of all, they're primarily focusing on the support slash transport helicopter itself than they are on the replacement to the beautiful Apache gunship. So I guess really let's take a look at this video and see what they have coming up potentially in the future to replace these amazing aircraft. Wolfpack 37, this is Ghost Rider 2-1. Passing Geronimo. Ghost Rider 2-1, Wolfpack 37, Roger. Copy Geronimo. Roger, three minutes. Got it, Roger, coming up. Sikorsky Boeing Future Vertical Lift. Assault and attack variants. With high commonality. Superior speed and high hot hover 6K, 95 performance. Exceptional hover control and low speed maneuverability. Expeditionary range and endurance and increased payload capability. The Sikorsky Boeing Future Vertical Lift is a scalable design based on proven X2 technology featuring fly-by-wire flight controls, advanced rigid rotor system, lift offset coaxial rotor, advanced drive system, Active vibration control, foldable rotor system, pusher prop with clutch, 
with active rudders and elevators, an all-composite fuselage, crew of four with a cabin for 12 combat-equipped troops, with weapons employment in all modes of flight, and expanded and enhanced medevac capacity for eight litters. Sikorsky Boeing Future Vertical Lift will provide superior speed, range, and payload performance. In addition to these improvements, FEL development, sustainment, training costs, and schedule are minimized through extensive commonality across assault and attack variants, including engines, drive system, propulsor, empennage and flight controls, crew station, mission equipment package, vehicle management systems, fuel system, secondary systems, training and life cycle support, analysis and validation with variant specific airframe and mission equipment. FEL will provide significantly increased mission flexibility, superior speed and high hot 6K95 performance, exceptional hover control and low speed maneuverability to meet the demands of high threat complex environments. With extended mission range and endurance, pusher prop enabled level body rapid acceleration and deceleration for improved survivability and maneuverability. Less relative rotor downwash for debarking and embarking of troops. Dramatically reduced acoustic signature and improved payload capacity. Foldable rotor system for strategic and expeditionary deployment and an aerial refueling capability via KC-130J and next generation Air Force tankers, as well as significantly reduced development, acquisition, training, and life cycle costs. Sikorsky Boeing Future Vertical Lift, the right design for long range, high speed, superior hover performance and unmatched maneuverability. The way forward. So there you go, quite an impressive little showcase video there. I always like the military showcase, uh, you know, commercials they make. They're very, very interesting. But according to this video, the final transport version will have a cruising speed of at least 280 miles per hour and will handle so-called hot high conditions with the ability to hold a hover high off the ground in a so-called altitude of up to 6,000 feet and temperatures up to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. If these figures prove accurate, you can only imagine the more nimble looking gunship model would have at least similar capabilities, which would be a lot more significant improvement of the existing attack helicopters such as the Cobra and the Apache. The US Marine Corps AH-1Z Zulu Cobra has a max crude speed of only 184 miles per hour, while the Army's larger AH-64D Apaches top out at 182 miles per hour. More speed would almost certainly equate to more range for the new Defiant Base attack helicopter as well. The AH-1Z has a combat radius of less than 150 miles and the AH-64D can fly about twice that distance under combat conditions before running low on a refuel. But from the video, the weapons arrangements look not to be much different from the traditional attack helicopters. The proposal has a chin turret with an automatic cannon that looks very much like the 3 barrel 20mm M197 gun on the Marine Corps AH-1s. As with both the AH-1 and AH-64 series, there are two stubby wings with four external store pylons for various ordnance and two launch rails on the tips for air-to-air -air missiles. In this particular case, it looks like the guy who's actually drawn this appears to have put some AIM-9X sidewinders on either side of the fuselage. In one of the frames though, it appears that the two ready racks may actually be attached directly to the chopper's main body. These features are notable since the last time the two defense contractors worked on an armed helicopter for the US Army and military, the result was the aborted RAH-66A Comanche helicopter. This stealthy rotorcraft had a complex internal weapons bay to keep the aircraft's radio signature as low as possible. The Defiant attack variant concept appears to be significantly more conservative when it comes to this low observable characteristic. Of course, though, this is all quite subject to the change as the joint venture gets to work on actually the flying version of these aircraft. Now, honestly, guys, these concept aircraft look extremely impressive on paper. They got some very, very interesting specifications and statistics. However, I look at them as a little nimbly bimbly, and I must admit, I'm a little old to uh, my age in terms of liking military equipment. I like the big, chunky, fat helicopters punching through the sky with those massive rotor blades, big old fuselages, and just, you know, delivering huge payloads day to day. Can this aircraft follow suit? 
Uh, probably yeah, and probably a lot quicker. Is it going to actually be able to do that though? I don't know, but it is interesting to see that they're starting to bring out new designs and concept for the transport and attack aircraft domain. Regardless though, both of these versions clearly draw heavily from the Sikorsky X-2 and S-97 Raider armed scout helicopter. In 2008, the Connecticut-based helicopter maker unveiled the X-2 as the high-technology demonstrator, with many of the features now on the SB-1, such as active vibration control to reduce noise. That development ultimately morphed into the Raider private venture. Sikorsky had initially pitched this rotorcraft to the Army as a replacement for the beautiful OH-58D Kiowa Warrior Scout helicopters which, once again, supported me in Afghanistan. This service's abrupt decision to ditch the Kiowas for Apaches effectively killed that plan. Concepts for the Raider had officially been given two traditional side-mounted weapons pylons and space for inside of six combat troops. Now it appears Sikorsky and Bone have split that idea into two distinct subtypes though it is still supposedly intends to mark the S-97 separately. Both Defiant types will also benefit from decades of work at Lockheed Martin, Sikorsky and Boeing, as well as other firms they had outright purchased in the past. Sikorsky itself became a subsidiary of Lockheed in 2015. These companies were responsible for numerous earlier military projects involving compound helicopters including the AH-56 Cheyenne, the X-49 Alpha Speedhawk and the X-H-59 Alpha, and also the RH-66. By the end of 2017, the Army hopes to have started flight tests of at least one SB-1 prototype and its primary competitor Bell Helicopters V-280 Valor. On April 10th, 2017, Bell said its aircraft, a tilt rotor derived in part from the V-22 Osprey, was 95% ready for those trials. Bell has shown plans to develop a more unified design that can perform both transport and attack duties, depending on its configuration. So guys, some really interesting developments in the helicopter military aviation world. I gotta admit, as I mentioned before, it's a bitter pill to swallow to actually see older helicopters and aircraft potentially being kicked out of the market with these new ones coming in. But, I have to admit, some of the specifications that are coming out for some of these newer design concept helicopters are extremely impressive. It is going to be rather interesting to see how they actually perform once put into the more strenuous conditions that actual military aircraft are put under. But, promising the, some of the things that they're promising, these aircraft I can see clearly replacing obviously the Black Hawk helicopter. I am a little skeptical over the whole speed thing. Yes, I understand that aircraft need the incredible speed they need to get to environments that are very dangerous and all that sort of stuff. But when you start uploading and increasing equipment on aircraft like these, you're, you're really increasing weight, you know, putting extra ammunition on, troops, equipment, medical supplies, whatever else you need to put these things, the more weight you put on them, the slower they're going to be. I'm really impressed though with these dual rotor designs that they're putting in place though and coming from the aviation industry that I work in right now with engines and aircraft engines, I'm really really intrigued to see how those aircraft engines are powering those beautiful rotor blades for these aircraft. Guys, I'd love to hear what you think about these aircraft. Let me know in the comments section below. Are you sad to see the UH-60 going and the Black Hawk uh, design eventually being superseded by more modern designs along with the Apache gunship? Or are you really, really excited to see what the US military is actually going to get given eventually in the future for these aircraft? I must admit, I myself am quite excited to see what they're actually going to bring into uh, full, I guess, fruition for the US military and what they're actually going to use. But uh, I'm a little skeptical on how well they're going to perform once they actually get into the service guys if you could please leave me a comment and a like i'd really appreciate it and as always feel free to go check out my patreon account to see if you wish to support my channel and if you are new to my channel and watching today please feel free to subscribe for more future content thank you again for watching and all the best bye bye